Good evening, everybody. I'd like to welcome you guys once again to a Wednesday night Bible study. And the title of my lesson tonight is going to be Not So Fast, My Friend. Because if you've been tuning in with us throughout the, the last couple of weeks, we've been on this uh, journey of faith, the, the stages of faith. And, and we've talked about stage one being a life-changing awareness of God. Stage two was our discipleship and, and learning from Christ. Stage three was the active and serving life. We did a lesson where we talked about the wall. And then last week we hit stage four, and, and that was our journey inward, our, our journey inside. And the reason that I titled my lesson tonight, Not So Fast, My Friend, is because I, I realized that just because I, I last week taught on the journey inward, that doesn't mean that's where you're at in, in your stage of faith. Or, or if it was the, the active and serving life, just because I'm teaching it doesn't mean that that's the, the stage that you are on. So don't be so fast to just rush through these and feel like you've got to keep up with everything that, that I teach. You can go back and, and watch these lessons. But if you guys remember last week, we, we talked about this, this journey inward. And we talked about two people, and we went over some really cool stuff. We talked about Elijah, and we talked about Peter. And if you guys remember, it was in 1 Kings 19, Elijah had the battle with the, the prophets of Baal. And he rained down fire from heaven. Uh, that made Jezebel, the, the wicked queen, upset. And, and she wanted to kill Elijah. So then Elijah ran because he was afraid for his life. And then he prayed to God. The same God that he prayed to to rain down fire from heaven. Do you guys remember what he prayed? He prayed to God. He said, just take my life from me. And, and as he was there, he, he fell asleep, the Bible said, underneath a, a broom tree. And when he woke up, there was water for him to drink and bread for him to eat. And God told me, he said, Elijah, what are you doing here? Go stand on the mountain. And he said, I want you to go stand on the mountain, and I'm going to pass by. And what we looked at is all of a sudden the wind came passing by. And the Bible said God was not in the wind. Then fire came and passed by, and the Bible says it, God was not in the fire. And then an earthquake came, and, and, and God was, was not in the earthquake. And see, we were able to take that lesson from Elijah and tie that in to Peter. And remember, Peter, he was on, on the boat in the Sea of Galilee, and, and Jesus came up to him in, in a pretty epic way. You know, he was walking on water. And Peter, he, he tries to walk on water. But what we were tying it into, it says that Peter saw the wind. And the wind was against him. And he, he began to, to sink, and, and Jesus saved him. And, and the main point that we made last week was that they were afraid of the things God was not in. But not of the, afraid of the things God was in. So for us to put a bow on this journey inward and tie this baby up, this is what Paul says in Galatians chapter 2. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. So when we look at our chart, the point we made is, hey, we don't have to be afraid to take this journey inward. Why? Because Christ is living inside of us. But once again, not so fast, my friend. Because see, what happens is, I realized I showed you guys some really cool stuff in the Bible. And it was awesome. The Bible's cool. You can read it. You can tie these things together. If you want to keep on studying it, go look at Acts chapter 2. Look at some fire and some wind that happens there at, that God was in. But when I started thinking about my lesson tonight, I thought, well, where was the application at in that lesson? How did your journey on the inside go? See, I showed you some cool things, but there was no application for this journey inward. And this journey inward is so important. And we have to understand this. Application is everything. I don't know if you guys heard, but there's this little thing going around called uh, COVID-19. And this has become really handy. These are flying off the shelves. That, that's uh, hand sanitizer. But see, this hand sanitizer does me absolutely no good if I never 
apply it to my hands. See, it says it kills 99.9% .9 of germs, but if it's not applied, it does not kill the germs. Me and uh, my girlfriend, Joy, we was actually going out to uh, eat the other night through a nice drive-thru. And uh, the lady that waited on us at, at the drive-thru at a fast food place, she came up to us and uh, she had one of these on. And see, these have become very important, these face masks. They have recommended wearing these not to spread germs. And, and the lady, she had it on, and it was very applicable. She was wearing it the correct way. She was doing it the right way. But then I looked behind her, and in the background, the guy on the fryer and, and the other lady making milkshakes, well, they had it on like this. See, it was not applied correctly. And if you guys know, we had a shortage in hand sanitizer. We had a, a shortage in face masks. And I have one more application to show you. Whoa, whoa, throw it here, Ben. That's enough. Application's been caught. <laughs> Probably better not show you the application of the toilet paper. <laughs> but anyways, my question was, how did your journey on the inside go? Last week, we ended on this verse right here. It was Psalms 139, and it's starting in verse 23. It says it like this. Search me, God. Know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. Here's the application. Don't just listen to me read it. We closed on this verse, and I have a feeling that everybody listened to me read this verse, but I want you to pray it. I want you to pray that prayer, search me, O oh God. And you say, but Ben, man, that, that can be, that can be really intimidating. That's the journey inward. That's what we're, we were talking about. That's what makes us uh, vulnerable, but that's what Christ is in, inside of this. If you think that can be intimidating, let me tell you what else can be intimidating. As I was preparing for this lesson uh, last night, I thought, God, just let me show them some cool things in the Bible. That went really good, how I showed the wind with Elijah and, and the wind with Peter. Just give me something that, that I can tie into that and let, let's move on forward. Because how am I going to teach people to take a journey inward? See, it can become intimidating for me to try to teach people to take a journey inward that have been Christians, some of you, Longer than I've been alive. And see, what I do, then I, I start to argue with God about it. And I say, God, will you, will you please ju just tell me what to say? You remember Clark's message on Sunday? What did he say? Perform for me, Jesus. And, and that's what I begin doing with God. And I've become irritated. It's like, how am I supposed to tell people to take a, a journey inward? God, just speak to me. And you know what? He did. And where he spoke to me was through his word. See, I, I remember from last week in 1 Kings 19, after Elijah was standing on the mountain and the wind passed by. God wasn't in the wind. The fire passed by. God wasn't in the fire. The earthquake came. God wasn't in the earthquake. What happened next? There was that still, small voice. And, and that said, that still, small voice is what makes me not afraid. See, God is in here. He doesn't have to scream at you. To Christians out there, just because you are the loudest, that doesn't mean that you're right. I feel like that we can learn a lot from Jesus. Isaiah 53, verse 7, it says it like this. He was oppressed and afflicted. So he went on Facebook and he told everybody about it. No, that's not what it says, is it? He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he didn't open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to slaughter. And as a sheep before his shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. So you guys ready for some application? This is going to be step one of my application teaching for our journey inward. 
Keep your mouth shut. Or as James says more eloquently through the Holy Spirit in verse 19 of James chapter 1, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Listen to that. Quick to listen. So let's journey in to where God is and listen to what he says. Because God says things like this right here out of Isaiah. Fear not. I am with you. I'm ready to take this journey with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes. You feel like nobody's out here to help you? I will, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Let's journey inward and listen to Jesus Christ say this to us in Matthew 11, verse 28. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. I love this proverb. In Proverbs 22, verse 17. Pay attention. And turn your ears to the saying of the wise. Apply. Application. Apply what? Apply your heart that God is in now to what I teach. And sometimes it's hard for us to hear that still small voice because we're so, so caught up in all the noise in this world that God's not in. So here's more application. Take time out of your day and practice silence and solitude with God. I don't care if it's one minute. I don't care if it's two minutes. I don't care how long you take, but start devoting yourself to doing that. I'm going to take some time out of my day where the cell phone's off, the TV's off, I'm in the room by myself or wherever it may be, and I'm going to sit in silence and meditate on God. And see, I, I feel like if we do that, it's probably going to be a little bit weird at first. Why? Because we don't do it that much. But remember, this is the, the vulnerable stuff again. This is that journey inward. But I ask you this, why is it so hard for us to listen? Very simple answer, because we don't ever shut up. So step two for my application of our journey inward, more like step one, keep your mouth shut. See, we are to be quick to listen and slow to speak. Do you have people in your life or do you know anybody in your life that no matter what you have done, no matter what story that you are telling, they've done it bigger, they've done it better, they've done it faster, and they've done it stronger. See, there's, there's no, no quick to listen, no slow to speak. Instead of listening, they're just ready to speak on, on what you're talking about, not listen to anything you're saying. What do we do like that with God? And see, there might be things in, in, in my life that I've done, and, and people might have done them bigger. People might have done them better. People might have done them stronger. People might have done them faster. But not with God. Not when you're talking with God. See, and, and sometimes I feel like we think we should be giving advice to God. I would say if you tuned in to Pastor Clark's message on Sunday, I believe he's coming out of Matthew 16, pay attention to what Jesus does to, to Peter after he confesses him as to Christ. But now that we've been quick to listen, slow to speak, it, it's going to be easier for us not to become angry. And, and that's why it's so important for us to, to go in this order, the order that, that James writes. Because when we journey inward, we are more than likely going to run into to some hurts in here. And some of them are going to be uh, self-inflicted, and, and, and some, of them, some of them not. I'm sure for anyone in here, if you journey inward, anyone watching this video, 
you probably found some anger. So what do you do with it? What do you do with the anger that you found? You must replace it with joy. I want you to look at, at how Jesus teaches this in, in Luke chapter 11, verse 24. See, we've journeyed in and we've found anger. In, in Luke 24, I'm sorry, Luke 11, 24, Jesus says this. When an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid and arid places seeking rest and does not find it. So we're going to go on to the board and, and I'm going to demonstrate this for you real quick. Let's say right here is yourself. Did I make that too big? You can see that. All right, there's yourself. I don't like to draw. I'm going to do it one more time. And Jesus says this, when an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Right here is your impure spirit. We're going to call it anger. The light of Jesus Christ came into us. What did it do? It drove that anger away. Anger was took out. Why? Because of the light of Jesus Christ. And see what Jesus goes on to teach in verse 25. I'm sorry, go back to 24, the end of 24. Then it says, I will return to the house that I left because it went out here and it didn't find any place to rest. So it says, I'm going to go back to the place that I left. Go on to 25. When it arrives, it finds the house swept and clean and put in order. And see, that's not what we want. We don't want anger just to go out of us. See, if anger goes out of us and then we don't replace it with joy, we don't replace it with peace, we don't replace it with love, then what happens? Verse 26 says, Then it goes and it takes seven other spirits, more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. Heartbreaking thing. The final condition of that person is worse than the first. So if we don't get rid of the anger and replace it with the love, then it's going to come back with resentment. It's going to come back with bitterness. It's going to come back with rage. It's going to come back with guilt. It's going to come back with shame. And if this is empty, you're worse off now than you were at the beginning. Back to James. We're going to go through this. Real quick, as James 1, 19, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Why? Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth that is in here and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly, humbly accept the word which was planted in you. How are you humbly accepting the word? You're quick to listen. You're slow to speak. You're humbly accepting that. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Simple words. Do what it says. Put application in your life to what the word says because anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like I can remember a time in my life where I couldn't look myself in the mirror I didn't want to see what was here. I, I knew what was here, and I didn't want to see this. But now that I can see myself in the mirror, what do I see? I'm made in the image of God. When you look at yourself in the mirror, you, you are made in the image of God. But if you're not putting application in that, when you look in the mirror, you forget what you look like. 
And see, right now, I can look around. I, these, these eyes that God has given me, I see Pastor Clark. I see Justin. I see Carrie. I see the door. I see the phone. You know who I don't see? I don't see myself. And see, if I look in the mirror and forget that I'm made in the image of God, then I see myself as what I think I am. And if I hadn't took that journey inward with Jesus Christ and realized that I am a child of God, I perceive myself of what I think I am. And that never works out good. That's what happens. James says that's what it's like for someone who, who hears the word and does not put it into practice. Verse 25. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law, What's it do? Gives freedom. What should I do? Continue in it. Not forgetting what they heard, but doing it. They will be blessed in what they do. So in closing, what's the perfect law? Because James said, whoever looks intently in the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it. What's the perfect law? I believe the perfect law is what Jesus said in Mark chapter 12. Love the Lord your God. With what? With, with all your heart. That's now the heart of Christ. And with all your soul. And with all your strength. See, that's not possible to do if you do not know God. And you cannot know God if you never truly take this journey inward, you're going to be full of all head knowledge and have no heart knowledge. And see, Jesus finished like this. He said, the second is this. Love your neighbor as who? As yourself. There's no greater commandment than these. You will never love your neighbor or anyone else if you first cannot love yourself. But, but if you can do this journey inward, then what we're going to see is God transform what's going on inside here, and there's going to be an outward pouring of his love that, that will be beautiful. And I'll tell you what it will do. It will make you completely different than anything in this world. God bless you guys. And I don't want to spend my life stuck in a pattern. And I don't want to gain this world but lose what matters. So I'm giving up. I want to be different, I want to be changed, till all of me is gone, and all that remains is a fire so bright, the whole world can see that there's something different, come and be different, oh, I know that I am far from perfect. Cross still says I'm worthy to take this feeling in my heart. Come and finish what you started. When they see me, let them see. I just want to be different, want to be changed till all of me is gone and all that remains is a fire so bright. The whole world can see that there's something different. Come and be different in me. Thank you once again, Kevin McLeod, for that awesome uh, praise and worship song. Uh, once again, we're excited to let you guys know we are going to be starting back the church on Sunday, June the 7th. 
But if you guys would, make sure you text uh, 423-251-1200. If you will text June 7, there's no space there, June 7, and, and you'll be prompted to uh, let us know which service you plan on attending, whether the 8.30 a.m., 9.45 a.m., 11 a.m. or Monday night at 6.30. That way we can kind of get a number and make sure we're social distancing and doing the things uh, the way we're supposed to be doing. But thank you guys for tuning in once again. We'll go to the Lord in prayer. God, I come to you right now, Lord. And I just ask that uh, you continue to be with us as we take this journey of faith. If there's uh, anyone out there right now, God, that has fear or is afraid to come in, Lord, I, I pray that you uh, continue to make yourself known to them, God. I pray that uh, for each and every person out there, for myself, God, that you just become more and more real to us. And uh, we understand just how awesome that you are. And we thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercy. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.